Hello and welcome to Life Church Today. Life Church Today wants to make a lasting difference in your life, in our community, and in the world. Our mission is to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. That's how Life Church Today is able to make a difference in the lives of so many people, and it's the motivating dynamic behind everything that we do. You see, church isn't merely a building, it's the people. So we aim to bring church to you. We meet around the globe online and in physical locations throughout America. No matter how and where you join Life Church today, you'll find friendly people who are excited to get to know you as you become part of the Life Church family. And wherever you are in life, you matter to God and you have a purpose to fulfill. Life Church today wants to help you become the person God has created you to be. Every journey, including yours, has a next phase and will help you discover it. It could start with simple things like serving, praying, or writing, finding God's vision for you. You will not have to take the next step by yourself. With a solid community of friends, you can smile, grow, and serve with people who sincerely care about you. Enjoy the sermons, read the devotions, reach out and contact us. We respond to every single person who writes us or find a group to join you on your faith journey. Worship, give, and love. Our community and world. We are excited about serving the world's community and offering God's love to people of all backgrounds, whether online, in person, individually, or in groups. Within our church and around the globe, we are focused on supporting and engaging in relationships that provide assistance and restoration to the hurting world. Our caring leadership team, including lead pastor Mike Robinson, works together to shape the vision and direction of Life Church today. Pastor Robinson, author of 40 books, serves with a team of enthusiastic and educated ministers using their numerous years' experience. They aim to serve you and your whole family. Visit lifechurchtoday.com. So we ask for your word to dig deep in our hearts today that we would receive it with great delight and dispense it and share it to others. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, there on your outline, I gave you a few interpretation uh, sketch there in Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, which we covered the last uh, two weeks. These th- this is part of the grid that you might want to look at the book of Revelation with. And uh, I'll go over it real briefly here. I'll, I'll touch on it uh, from time to time, but this is very important as you go through the book of Revelation because so many people say, I don't want to read that book because it's so mysterious, it's so hard to to understand. But here's some interpretation uh, tools that can help you found from the book itself because you always want Scripture to interpret Scripture. It says in verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ. So that's very important. That the main point of the book of Revelation is Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Okay. And notice what it says, which God gave him to show his servants, things which must shortly take place. So some of the things are going to happen around John's time, and he sent and signified it by an angel. Notice that word signify. That means that much of what the book of Revelation is going to be is signs and symbols and metaphors. So we have to understand that from the get-go. Then he goes in verse 3. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. So you can see there again, something around John's time is near. And also, notice this, that those who read it and follow it are blessed. So tell the person next to you, you are blessed. Go ahead. You guys didn't really mean that, huh? We'll give you another chance later. And from Jesus Christ, to him who loved and washed us from our sins with his own blood, so you can see that this love of Christ is a theme of the book of Revelation. You think, well, it's just end times. No, it's not. It's about Jesus and his love for us. And he has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So you can see there are Christians. We're all ministers in some sense. We're not all pastors. We're not all evangelists. But we all have the opportunity to minister to other people, just like Cindy testified earlier. Behold, he's coming with clouds. So obviously a big part of the book of Revelation is Jesus' second coming. Write these things which you've seen. This is to John. The things which are, remember the already and not yet interpretation? There's where we get it from. Things that are for John. They are right then in 65 AD. So that's the already for us. They are for him. And the things which shall take place after this. And so already, not yet. So later on these things will take place. 
Now let's go to some new material here in Revelation chapter 2. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write. So he's writing this particular part of the book of Revelation to the church at Ephesus. Remember, Paul wrote the book of Ephesians. That was a letter written before this to the people at, at Ephesus. And part of it, notice what it said at the end there. We read it earlier. Grace to all those who love the Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. So you're going to see the connection there that Paul says something very similar to what John is going to warn them to about their first love, right? So Paul's anticipating this with the Spirit, that we want this love for Jesus to be an undying love, okay? And then John's later going to say that you've left your first love, so that warning and that it was not heeded. And then he goes on to say, these things who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Remember, seven is usually a number in the book of Revelation of completeness, or it might be universal uh, meaning, and so we keep that in mind, that Jesus is among the churches here. The fullness of the church, universal. And then he goes on to say, Jesus is speaking. I know your works. That particular Greek word, remember the New Testament's written in Greek? That Greek word is the word erga, which is the word where we get energy from. So these people are putting a lot of energy in and helping people and doing good deeds. So Jesus says, I know your works, your labor. That's even a stronger term for a similar thing. And your patience. That particular word is more of a word for endurance. That these people are enduring these things. This is a very powerful thing that, that Jesus is telling them that they're doing really well in these areas. This, this work and they're enduring through it. And that you cannot bear those who are evil. So the evilness that goes on in society, they are trying to remedy it with good and truth and love. And you have tested those who say their apostles are not and found them to be liars. So there's guys running around in the first century saying they're apostles when they were not. And they, they tested them and challenged them and then, of course, had them let leave the church if they didn't repent. Verse 3, And you persevere and have patience. Same word. That's used three times in this. So this patience, this, this idea of enduring through all these difficult things. See, so often in our lives, we don't want to endure things. We want things to be easy. Amen? Yes. Amen. Right? Yes. What, what Cindy and the family went through was not easy, but they endured through it through the power of God and applying yeah. the name and the love of Jesus. And God was honored, and it was a very wonderful thing to hear, right? So you can see these people are doing similar things, and they've labored my, in my namesake. So they're doing this in Jesus' name. You see, that's the beauty about it. Well, whatever your, your view of spiritual gifts, here's a key. If, if you think they've all ceased, the, this cessationism, or you think that the spiritual gifts are moving, it doesn't hurt to try, does it? If you ask in Jesus' name. Whatever your view is, if God, who is sovereign, doesn't want to answer your prayer, guess what? He won't answer it. Okay? Now, if you're wrong and you're praying in Jesus' name, not in your own authority, nothing bad can happen. Because you're praying under the name of Jesus, understanding He's sovereign and He's in control. So it doesn't hurt to pray these things, even if you think I have a little doubt there, or I actually have a doctrine that doesn't believe these things. So keep that in mind. My namesake that Jesus is saying, and notice they have not become weary. All this thing, they're just getting energized around. You know, they, they always say, you know, when you go to, uh, you need something done in the church, go to the person who's the busiest. Right? That's what they say. Because that guy or gal is just going to take more and more and more. Just like Ashley. You know, she kept giving her more. She kept doing more and more and more. You know, that's the type of person is. They don't get weary. Why? Because they're being led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. If you move in the flesh, you get weary just after one thing. Amen? <laughs> right? Don't give me anymore, you know? I just drew the raffle. That's all I can do, right? So yeah. understand that with the Holy Spirit moving in your life, you can do a great and amazing things and not get weary. Amen. In verse 4, here is Jesus speaking. This is very, very powerful. All these good things, he know it. And this is good for us when we're having conversations with loved ones, right? Our spouses, our children, always try, if possible, to say some good things about them. Amen? Right? How many have heard that, you know, in your marriages, right? We know that, right? We're not always good at it, but that's what we should do, is say some very positive things that they're doing, and then talk about some of the difficulties. So that's Jesus' style, and Jesus says this, Nevertheless, I have this against you that you've left your first love. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. After that, in Ephesians chapter 6, remember, that is the last verse in the book of Ephesians. You know, to have this undying love for Jesus, the last verse in the book of Ephesians, written to those at Ephesus, and yet, they didn't heed that. They left their first love. See, this first love is not so much in time, but in priority. First in priority. Okay? Because you might have loved other things before Jesus. Amen? But what's your priority? What's your first love? 
See, the most important thing that happened to this church was they were doing good works. And they put Jesus on the back burner. They were doing all these good things, but they forgot about Jesus. So here it is. Always, 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 always remember, everything you're doing is about Jesus and not yourself. It's not about the church. It's not about your religion. It's about Jesus. If it's not, don't do it. Somebody say amen. 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 So this is a day right here. This is a day that you say to heaven, I need a word from the living God. I need the Lord of hosts here today to rise up within me and blow the doors off of my stale, boring life. God of fire, light me up. Amen? Amen. How many are with me for that? God of fire, light me up. Set me ablaze. Holy Spirit, come and set me on fire for Jesus. That I have a passion and a love for Jesus. Somebody say amen. 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 See, the Bible says that God sent His word and healed them. That mm. word yes. in the Hebrew, the Old Amen. Testament's written in Hebrew, is a word that means bringing a wellness or a wholeness or even a deliverance, a victory. That God sent His Word and healed them. Some of you need to receive that today. That God's Word will breathe life into your soul. Remember, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Remember the other verse that says, Greater is He that's in me than he that's yes. in the world. Somebody say amen. amen. Receive that Word today. Let that Word move on your heart today. Receive a fresh unction from the Spirit of God today. Because with man, it's impossible. But with God, help me here, all things are possible. How many believe that today in Jesus' name? You've seen it, huh? You know it. Because you know Jesus. Some folks fake it, though. We've all done that at times. I'll tell you a little story. Up in heaven, God was watching this big Christian conference. Huge. Mega church. Starbucks in the lobby, all that. They're having really... This major conference for God and His honor and His glory. And God's watching it. And hundreds of people are working around the clock, making sure everything runs really smooth. And when the conference began, God listened to the worship and heard the passionate sermons and the booming prayers and watched all the altar calls. And God's watching this as thousands are being touched and receiving healing. And there's prophecies and miracles going on. And God's watching all this. But God was unsure and wanted to know if the people that were involved were really sincere. So on the last day of the conference, he decided to visit that church for the first time. I don't know if you caught that. <laughs> <laughs> that morning, he slipped into the back of this gigantic conference hall. And during the course of the evening, he got talking to one of the deacons who was volunteering at the event. They hit it, so well, they hit it off so well that God wanted to ask him some more questions. And the deacon said, well, let's go to the after party after the event and so at the after party God leaned over and, and asked the deacon he said listen I'm, I'm just passing through here I don't, I don't really stay at these kind of places a lot of times so can I be honest with you I want you to tell me do you really believe all this stuff it's God asking the deacon then the deacon immediately became uncomfortable and replied shh, shh don't ask that not here the organizers will hear us then when God pushed the issue, the deacon looked around and saw the worship band, he saw the pastors, the evangelists, and all the presenters right next to him, the main speaker within earshot. So he whispered, I can't answer that either. People are listening. Tell you what, meet me at midnight at the car park if you really, really want to know. So later that night, God went to the car park and met the deacon, away from anybody else who could possibly hear. Okay, God said, I have to know. It's obvious you couldn't tell me the truth when everybody was listening. So what's the story? Do you really believe in all that spiritual stuff? In response, the deacon looked surprised and declared, Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I have to conceal the fact that I do believe in all that stuff because they don't. Wow. Quite a parable, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So often we go through the motions and we say we believe in certain things. But the test comes when you're involved in something like Cindy and her family does. Do you really, really believe that? Mm -hmm. See, I believe in modern medicine. I think it's it's a result of the Christian worldview being applied and seeing that advance. We want to see it advance more and more and more. But see, augmenting that with prayer, I think, is a wonderful idea. And to see what God can do when He says, you know what? No, you're not going to have that surgery. Rise up and walk. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, Hallelujah. what did Jesus give us from the Father? The kingdom. He gave us a kingdom and the power and the glory. 
the expansion of the kingdom of God with Jesus as king to see the advancement of love and truth which never was on the planet like it was until Jesus came. That's right. See, the power of God to set up in advance a kingdom that can never be defeated or never be overcome. See, the Bible says in the book of Revelation over and over, you are overcomers. When you look at that Greek word, it means victors. You are victors. In fact, that word is a Greek word where the founder of Nike got the word Nike from. Victors. See, all of us have a chance to rise up out of the commonplace and into the realm of action and love and loving Jesus as number one. And everything flowing from that, the font of all that you do is the love that you have for Jesus. Or you know what? Don't do it. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus is the most profound person in the Bible. Jesus is the most amazing man in history. Jesus is the most awesome person in the whole vast cosmos. Jesus is the Son of Man and the Son of God. Very man and very God. Yes. Yet how did His life go? Jesus. Did the Father say, Oh, you're my Son. Just go sit on that silk pillow over there and command the angels to serve you cake and tea. No, a thousand times no. How did the world treat Jesus? How did the world treat Him? That perfect man was catching hell from before He was even born. Now that's Jesus. Amen. Right. Yet Jesus was a choice of the Father. While He was in the womb, they were plotting against His life. When He was a baby, they were planning to kill Him. His parents had to run and flee and hide in Egypt to escape Herod's death sentence. That's, right. that's the life for Jesus. Some of you were raised in legalistic churches. Some of you, like me, were raised in no church at all. Well, how did you get to the truth of Jesus? The cross and the blood and the power. How did you get there? You did not leave it on your own. You did not leave your lifestyle on your own. It was God's grace, a monergistic work on your heart that you didn't even know about, that God was working. And so you ran into Jesus. You were fleeing and running from something. Maybe you didn't even know what. And you were running to something. Maybe you didn't even know what you were running to. But Jesus knew. Somebody talk to me now. I'm talking about Jesus. Come on now. If you merely ran from Oklahoma to Florida, do you no good? You merely run from... Tennessee to Nebraska, it do you no good. You have to run to Jesus. Amen. You have to run to the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who took the nails and the thorns for you and for me. That's Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. And in this book we see Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back in great glory and power. And He's going to beat back and beat down all the insanity and darkness and hatred of the Antichrist and the world system. Somebody say yes, yes. sir. Yes. And when Jesus comes, the ministers better be preaching the Word and focusing on Jesus and loving the people. For Jesus, He said, He's going to take away the candlestick from them. That's right. When the wolves came, the fake shepherds quaked and ran and fled for fear. False shepherds who feed themselves and not the flock, rich and sassy, full of themselves. Remember the gospel story when the winds came up and the storm was blowing and the master, Jesus, was asleep in the boat. And the disciples became afraid and they woke up Jesus. It didn't matter how hard the storm was a moving or how much the wind was blowing. Jesus was unmoved, resting in the boat. Mm -hmm. The disciples got excited and anxious and worried, full of all fear, for it was a horrible storm. And so they woke him up and Jesus looked at them and he turns to the storm and Jesus stands up and declares, Peace be still. Mm -hmm. And the storm ceased. The winds were calm. And the waves softened. Right. And the disciples rejoiced. Amen. And then Jesus looked at the disciples and said, Ye a little faith. Why? Because they should have tried to do what He just did. God didn't have to answer their prayer, like I said earlier. But they should have tried it in Jesus' name. See, I'll never bend the knee to this world or the beast. I'll never bend the knee to political liars and thieves. Never will I bow down and act like some silly money preacher. For I know Jesus. I know Jesus. I know He's my first love. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. I'm never going to leave Him. He's Jesus. Somebody say amen. And you know Jesus. You really, really know Him. He's changed your heart. He's changed 
your life. He's changed your touch. He's changed your word. You are a Jesus man. You're a Jesus woman because he's so wonderful and so special. He's changed your life. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I love Jesus. I love but the world is faithless. Some in the church, not all, not even most, but some in the church throughout America are faithless. But we have power. We have power of the Spirit. Right. Here it says in the book of Revelation, He who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. See, if we bow down to the world and the flesh and the devil, we fail. Somebody talk to me now. See, we can see the embers of revival if we take courage today and trust God today and say, you know what, Lord? I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. You and you alone, you're all that matter to me. You have my whole heart, not half of it. You have my whole heart, Lord. Here it is. Amen. See, God honors radical, sincere, risk-taking faith. Joy and hope flow from such. See, when arcs are built, lives are saved. When soldiers march, walls tumble. When staff are raised, seas still open. When the gospel's preached, people are still saved. God is raising up a people to love others with an unconditional love. I see so much love in our hearts in this church. Frankly, I haven't seen anything like it. And I've been able to serve some really loving churches over the years. Because we're moving from what we feel love is into the aspect of unconditional love. Yes. Of godly love. Yes. God's kind of love. Yes. Jesus' is kind of love. Why? Because He dwells in our hearts by faith. It's possible because Jesus is there. It's not about Mike. It's not about you. It's about Jesus who dwells in your heart by faith. See, a divine love with intensity and passion and embrace of the awesome love of God that we're called to receive God's supernatural love, the fullness of His love, to simply enjoy it and delight in it and live in His love so you can be filled to overflow so you can pour it out and dispense it to others. It's all about love. The world says, no, change your hair color or change your gender or change this or change that so people will see you. You want to get noticed? Here it is. Love the world with an unconditional love. That will make you different than everybody. Be a lover like no one's seen. Say, you know what, today I'm going to school, I'm going to work as if Jesus is in my touch and in my words. And guess what? He will be in Jesus' name. Say amen. 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 In John chapter 5, verse 19 and 20 on your outline there. I love this. The triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the one true and living God. Jesus gave them this answer. Boy. <laughs> Have you ever having a day that seems like a downer? Just open up the first four Gospels and start reading a little bit. There's nobody like Jesus. There's nobody like Him. Jesus gave them this answer. Truly I tell you, the Son could do nothing by Himself. He can do only what He sees His Father doing. Because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. Remember the Father's omnipresence and omnipotent. And so that presupposes Jesus is thus the same. Jesus knew the Father so well. He gets to the point where it's just a word, just a sign, just a twinkle, just a cue, just a hint, just a nod. And Jesus knew what the Father was revealing. There's some husbands that can know their wives so well that when she just gives them that look, he knows what that look is. Forgot to empty the trash. Mm. You know the person so well that if they just give a certain look, they know what that look means. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. You can see just a hint here, just a little here or a little there for the Father. And Jesus knew what the Father wanted. And people who really, really know each other, they pick up on it. Any little move, any little wink, any little eyebrow movement, and they know what they're thinking and what they want. Wouldn't it be something... To know God that well, the more that you know God, the less fear you have, the less worry you have. God could just say a word and the Holy Spirit could just 
illuminate a verse and you would know exactly what God was Amen. telling you yes. and you'd go in that direction. Amen. Yes. Amen. Max, I told you about him a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Max is the guy that went on that island, deserted island all by himself and built three buildings mm -hmm. all by himself. One was his house, second was a, a church, and the third one they asked what it was and he said it's a church I no longer attend because the people there aren't good. That's and then, right, third time. Uh, Max, well, same guy, he's now on the mainland, <coughs> and he goes into a bar. And he goes there for weeks and weeks and orders, four beers, four Heineken's, every single day for weeks and weeks and weeks, years and years, four Heineken's, every single day. Every month, goes to the bar, bartender doesn't say anything, he doesn't say anything, just gets his four Heineken's, drinks them and leaves, every single, every single day. One day he walks in, Max walks into the bar, and he orders three Heineken's. Bartender says, whoa, whoa, uh, whoa, Max, why, why are you only ordering three three beers? You've been coming in here for years and years, and you order four Heineken's every single day. Why three? Max goes, well, I drink the four beers, three in honor of my, because I'm really <coughs> close to my family, three in honor of my two brothers and my father, and the fourth one's for myself. So I, I have four beers, three for my family, one for me. And, and my father just died, so I, I now just have the three beers, two in honor of my my brothers and, and one for me. So Max continues to go to the bar for, for months and, and years, ordering three Hanukkahs every day, three Hanukkahs every single day, holds them up, drinks them, and leaves. Then one day he walks in and he orders two Hanukkahs. And this is a parable, I think you're going to catch it. He orders two, two Hanukkahs. And the bartender said, oh no, I wonder who died. I gotta help Max. I mean, mm. last time this happened, somebody died. So he goes, Max, um, you know, last time you stopped drinking a beer, somebody died. Did, did one of your brothers or somebody die? He goes, Oh no, it, it, it's nothing like that. Uh, you know, I, I drink the, the the two beers for my brothers and the one for myself. I no longer do that now because I went to the doctor and the doctor said I need to stop drinking. <laughs> so now I don't drink the one for myself. Only drink the two for my brother. <laughs> See, too often we lie to ourselves. See, my job is for us to get serious with the love of Jesus. Amen. Not just for you to hear it, not just for you to acknowledge it, but for you to receive it and delight in it and apply it. That we, I know, we can change this town. We can turn this town upside down by love. Just by love, just by expanding, not just saying it like Max, but to make it real and really, really doing it. See, God will bless you in a supernatural way. Understand the potential of His love. It changed the world. It changed history. And it can in our life. It can change your family. It can change your workplace. It can change your town. We need love. The church in America needs the love of Jesus. Quit playing these silly games and get into the love of Jesus. Somebody say that. So I want to live and flourish in God's love and see God working in my life. Understand He's there for me. Who can be against me? Yes. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your Word, Lord. We understand that we all fall short. We want to be serious. We want to be honest with ourselves, but most of all with God. That so often we do blow it. We have our own flaws. We have our own weaknesses. We have failed. But You, Lord Jesus, You love us no matter what. And those of you that are here, Maybe you haven't walked with God for a while. Maybe you backslid, or maybe you've never come to Jesus yet. But this is your opportunity. This is a place with everybody's heads bowed and everybody's eyes closed. This is between you and your Heavenly Father. If you want to come to Him and have that free gift of salvation, to have complete forgiveness of sins, to know that you know that you have a place in heaven, here's your opportunity. You say this prayer with sincerity, and God will honor it. You say, Heavenly Father, I believe. I believe in Jesus. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus died for all my sins and that He rose again on the third day. I believe this. Today I make Him Lord and Savior of my life. I receive Him today in Jesus' name. And all of us, Father, I ask for Your love to be poured and shed abroad on our hearts like Romans tells us will. 
Lord, that we would be opened up, that as we've seen this advancement of your love, the success of your love, the prosperity of your love, that we would say that's not enough, that we want more. We want an overflow. We want to see radical things change in yeah. Jesus' name. Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. 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 All right, with that, we'll take Thanks the for joining us at Life Church today. It's our joy to play a role in all God is doing in and through your life. We would love to continue with you on that journey. If you have any questions or prayer requests, visit lifechurchtoday.com or email us. We offer free counseling and a free Bible school because we train numerous people into ministry. Use your talents and answer God's call. God wants to do so much for you and through you. If you would like to give, click the donation button on the site. Pastor Robinson's 40 books are on Amazon.